And this week I've got a question for you. Do you want to take your images to the next level? And the next level is more about, do you really want to plan for it? Do you want to take control of how your image looks? Well, this week I am going to show you how to plan your session, how to rotate your image, and get your camera to plate soft and rotate at the same time so you can get the image that you want. So, are you guys ready? Let's get started. Are you tired of taking that picture of Andromeda and you feel like you're cutting off part of her outer, you know, greatness and you're, you're just kind of nipping it and it's, it's not the way you want it, but you know, Andromeda is sitting like this and all of a sudden your image comes in and you're taking this view. Well, what if you could rotate your image to get all of Andromeda in it? Now, this is given that your telescope and camera combo will allow you to do that. But aren't you tired of taking images like this and losing all this greatness? Well, they reached a point where I was tired of it also. So what I learned how to do was to plan my image and rotate the image the direction that I wanted it to be. Thinking about it from a photographer's standpoint, you know, you, you don't cut people off at the elbows or at the knees or heaven forbid cutting off their head and just getting this part in the image. Um, we want to get as much in our image as we can. You know, for the most part, we have a rectangle and we're, we're bound by that rectangle, but we want to get what we can get inside that rectangle. So if that means rotating Andromeda slightly to go from corner to corner, then let's do it. It's really, really easy. But before I take you onto the computer, I'm going to show you real quick on my telescope what I do. Now, during the plate solve process, I'm going to use Sequence Generator Pro as my example, and um, it will take a picture of where you are in the sky. It will solve it with a sky map. It will slew your telescope over into that direction, and then it will take another picture and decide are you close enough in that area or not. But the first thing Plate Solve likes to do once you turn on the rotation option is it looks at how the image is rotated. Is it rotated this way or is it rotated this way? And it calculates how far off you are on rotation. And Sequence Generator Pro during the Plate Solve process will say, stop everything. You need to rotate your camera 30 degrees clockwise. So it pauses everything for you. You get out there and you rotate your camera this way. Most of us have our cameras attached on by a compression screw here onto the focuser. It's just as simple as loosening up the thumb screws on the compression and physically rotating your camera about 30 degrees. Now you're probably asking, how do I know what 30 degrees is? Well, approximately here, every one millimeter of rotation is about two degrees in rotation, okay? Now, when I was beginning, at first, I drew a pencil line across the focuser and the top of the flattener so I could visually see how far they separated, and then I would guesstimate, you know, that's about two or three millimeters, or I need to move, you know, a full three centimeters it is always possible. But, you know those seamstress tapes, the real flexible measuring tapes? Well, they've got inches on one side, they got millimeters on the other. Well, if you cut one of those at about, I think it was uh, 10 centimeters, well, gosh, I don't think it was 10 centimeters, but it was about one, zero to 10, and I would cut it, and I would double side tape it onto the focuser side, and then I would take 20, to 29 or so, and I would tape it onto the flattener side, 
And then I would line up zero to zero, and that's what I would call my zero point. And if it said to move 30 degrees, then I would move 30 degrees based on that measuring tape. It really worked out great to get a visual idea of how far you rotate things, and it sped things up. But the one thing you want to think about is your tolerance. In Sequence Generator Pro, you can set up your tolerance to be, I want it to plate solve until I'm within three degrees of my target. Well, three degrees is, a, is pretty damn ambitious. It's good, but it will take you a little while to you know, get there. You'll probably go through the rotation process at least four times until Sequence Generator Pro says it's good enough for you to move over to the next step which is where it starts moving your RA and deck to nudge around to get to the image that you want. But it is possible. I typically have mine set at five degrees as my tolerance, so it's plus or minus five in rotation, and that works out really great. And this even works great when you're choosing to do mosaics and stuff. So, now that you know the idea of what we're gonna do, let's jump over to Sequence Generator Pro. I'll show you how to set it up how to turn on the rotator option in the settings, and then we'll run through a real quick sequence of plate solving with rotation. All right, let's get going. All right, everybody, we're over here in Sequence Generator Pro, and I'm going to show you how to create or to plan your session. So you can get, let's say, Andromeda in your picture completely. So I'm going to go over here to Tools, and we're going to drop down to Framing and Mosaic Wizard. Now, uh, I believe several other softwares have the same option, so you just kind of watch this one and apply it to the software that you're currently using. I'm going to choose an object. Let's go with M31. And I'm going to do a field of view of about three. That's just so I can see the whole image when it pulls up. And I'm going to say Fetch that image. Now, please be sure that you are on the internet when you attempt this. All right, so there is our beautiful Andromeda. Now, I should have gone up here to my profile, and I'm gonna use this profile that I just started here. This is the Explorer Scientific 102 with a 1600 monochrome camera and a 0.8X reducer. All right, so once that profile is there, and that's one that we're gonna, I'll show you how to set up, it pulls in my image scale. Um, I'm gonna say I want a 20% overlap between my images, and it pulls in the camera pixel scale for you. Now, the first thing you wanna do is just draw yourself a rectangle. Now, as you can see, I am missing a good portion of Andromeda. And based on this camera scale, um, camera telescope combo, I'm gonna lose a lot of Andromeda, whether I like it or not but it can improve the odds so I don't just have the really bright center. There's this option here, it's called Rotate Selection. Now, if I drag the cursor over, you can see that my image is rotating. And this is, let's pretend it could be my camera rotating. And I'm gonna rotate this so I can get as much of Andromeda as I possibly can in my image. Now, if you want to go all fancy like, we could turn this into a mosaic, which would probably be the better option, because see, I am losing some on each end, but really that's not bad for all intended purpose purposes. Now, if I wanted to turn this into a mosaic, I just increase either the ups or the downs, and let's see, that one, huh, I think I'd rather go this other direction, just based on how I've got it rotated now. Nope, that doesn't work so good either. So let's change the rotation some until it does work for us, which means I'm probably gonna go this way again and go that way again and drag and drop until I can get Andromeda in there. And let's see, let's drag this some more. Now, if you know your angle, you're welcome to type it on in there, but that looks pretty good. I've got Andromeda in my image plus this little outer galaxy and this grayscaled area between is my overlap. Now what this is going to do is going to create two target images, image number one and image number two. So once you're finished taking image number one, 
your, cam your um, telescope mount will plate solve and slew over to image number two and keep on going. So let's say create our sequence. My sequence name, I'm going to leave it at M31. I'm going to append targets to sequence, meaning if you had any other targets in your sequence already set up, this will just drop down at the end of the list rather than overwriting everything in your list. But I'm starting a brand new sequence and I don't have anything of any goodness in there. So I'm going to say replace everything and that'll get rid of that, you know, target one that always pops up. We're going to slew and center on location. Okay. That's key center. And let's see, rotate or validate camera angle. Be sure to check this. This is going to activate the rotation function in the plate solve for you. And I'm going to say, okay. And there we go. I have created a new sequence with two targets in it. Let's take a look at it. Here we go. Number one and number two. Okay. But my equipment profile and all that is not set up to handle rotation. So let's go up here to tools and equipment profile manager. And let's go to that profile that we just used, my uh, 102 scope, the 1600 camera, and the reducer. And if you come over here to other, there is an option here for rotator. And currently it's set up with no rotator on it. Well, we don't have a night crawler. I don't want to use a simulator, so I want to use the manual rotator. And you know who the manual rotator is? It's you. You are the rotator, okay? So let's select manual rotator and save and okay. Okay. Now that we've got our profile saved, we need to apply that profile to the sequence that we just started. So go under file, apply profile to sequence, and let's find that profile. Here it is. Explorer scientific with a 1600 monochrome camera and the 0.8 reducer. That was the sequence that I had. That's the profile that I had called and say, okay, now you've got your two targets here. You're ready to go. Turn on all of your equipment all the way down. And then you see this guy right here, the little triangle down, it expands a window and your rotator is now set up as the manual rotator. So be sure to turn and connect this one on also. So now that everything is connected, you go ahead and set up your sequence to however you want to take your pictures and you say run. And you shouldn't have to do anything after that. Plate solve is going to take care of it all for you. It is like a dream. Okay. So let's go over to a pre-recorded sequence where I had run through a plate solve that had to rotate and I'll talk you through it. All right, guys, let's do a play by play on this plate solve. I have hit run my sequence and now it is taking an image of the sky where the camera is sitting at this moment. There we go. Now it has taken that image and it's going to try to plate solve with it. It's extracting the stars. It's going to look and see where everything's at. It's found what region it's in. And now it's going ahead and slewing over to where it believes it needs to be. And oops, my camera is out of rotation. In fact, it's out of rotation by 79.2 degrees. So I'm going to get up from behind my desk and loosen the thumb screws on the camera and rotate it as close as I can to 79.2. But we all know this is not going to happen on the first try. So once I'm done rotating my camera, I'll go ahead and accept the OK button. And now it's going to run through the process again of taking another image, extracting the stars and trying to find a region match. Now, obviously, if you look down here at the bottom, it says attempt one failed and it's approximately 1,892 pixels off along with my 79.2 degrees. But right now it is only going to think about my rotation and oops, it looks like I am still out. I am 42.4 degrees off. So I am going to rotate my camera counterclockwise approximately 42.4 degrees or as close as I can possibly get that. So that's what about about 22 millimeters. I've got to see, you know, if I can move it, that's where that tape measure would come in really handy right now. If I had that on everything, 
So now that I've gone ahead and rotated things, it's taking another picture. It's going to keep going through this process until I finally get the rotation right. Now on this particular night, what I did not realize is I had my tolerance level set all the way down to like three degrees and I made it work for it or it made me work for it. Nope. I'm still 8.4 degrees out. Go out there, rotate it again, counterclockwise, just a little bit more. It looks like it's taken me a while there. All right. Must be exhausted from all that getting up and down from behind my desk. So it's going to take another picture. It's going to, let's see, it, it's working. It says it's working. It's estimating my background. It's going to subtract the background. It will then extract my straw, my, my straws. Yeah, my straws. Now it's going to extract my stars. If I can learn how to talk, it found a match. Yay. I, oh gosh. I'm still 4.3 degrees. Come on. Yeah, see, this is why I say bump your tolerance up to about five or you're going to sit out there doing little micro turns. This is like a two millimeter turn. So yeah, that's not fun. But I believe on this time I'm going to be successful with my rotation. But with each rotation, it slewed the scope just a little bit more. It says it's only 42 pixels out. My tolerance is set at 50. So if I got it right and rotated exactly 4.3 degrees or you know plus or minus three degrees then it should be successful at any moment yes i'm done so as you guys can see this is a really easy step to take in improving your images i mean nobody wants their corners cut off of their beautiful galaxy if you can help it and rotation is such an easy thing to do as you have just seen so give it a try let me know how it works for you well, thank you guys for sticking around. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe below and hit that alert bell so you know when I update with new astro-related material. I try to post a video every week. You can also follow me over on Facebook as Amy Astro, and I do have a website available that is amyastro.com also. And there's a contact button there if you ever want to reach out and ask some questions privately. Please go right ahead. I do my very best to answer all of them. And if your question requires a video, I attempt to do that also. So again, thank you for stopping by. I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video. And until then, remember I love all of y'all. And I hope you have some clear skies and some great health, okay? Goodbye.